What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. Where do we slot Oklahoma City right now? Because, like, what... (laughs) They're just awesome. Like, they have been awesome for almost the entire season. Shea Gildas Alexander is like an automatic 30 every single night. Chet Holmgren, they needed him to be a strong number two, and that's exactly what he's been. They've got a bunch of guys out there that can defend multiple positions. They're another one of those teams, top 10, I think, in offensive and defense efficiency, net rating. Like You try to find flaws with this team, and the only one that that you can come up with really is that they're really young and maybe not ready for, for that type of moment. I mean, I mean, case and Wallace comes in. Nobody thought case and Wallace could shoot this level. He has, and he's defending. He's another guy that can defend with this group. I mean, I, I don't know where to put them right now because they've got a top five record in the NBA. They're playing great basketball. They only seem to lose to teams that are like on their level or better. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder when we have to take Oklahoma city seriously. We do have to take them seriously. I, I view them as like a, a serious upset threat, uh, specifically for s- certain types of matchups, because like the youth thing that you mentioned is important. And that's obviously something you have to factor in in the postseason. Just everything about NBA history tells us young teams don't win. That's just that's just, you know, e- even when we look at some of the old, younger teams that have had success, like the Thunder with Kevin Durant, there were veterans on that roster like Hendrick Perkins and Derek Fisher, as you know. So like th- it's a little different. This is this roster does not have a veteran like they literally don't, you know. It's all young kids. Now, from a basketball standpoint, the big thing is they're just really small on the front line and they can't Mm -hmm. defensive rebound. And so to me, to me, it really comes down to matchup specific stuff. So like, for instance, they are one of the best perimeter defense teams in the league. So like if they ran into like a Golden State or like Mm -hmm. a Phoenix where they're not going to be as bothered on the front line by some of the mismatches there, I could see them upsetting a team but i'd give them like almost no chance to beat minnesota denver or the lakers because of just the front, but, the front but like, what size. is like you know what i mean and do they do something about that this year like that's the question i'm gonna try to drill down on in the next couple of like they've got all these assets they can't use all these draft picks but they know that they they probably can't pay all these guys because you know it, it, eventually the cost is going to become prohibitive like yeah, I, I remember, you know, Sam Presti, who's, you know, preseason press conferences, I just record for hilarious sake because they're like an hour and a half long and he uses all these metaphors that take, you know, a, a long time to kind of interpret. But <laughs> I, I, it won't, it's like you've got all these pieces. Like, do you go out and get somebody? Like, you, do you, I don't, again, I don't know who that is at this point. The guys that are available that we know of right now are more like wing defenders. And that's not really what Oklahoma City needs, to your point at the moment. But like, is this a team that, that makes a big play. I mean, because even though like they're young, as I mentioned, you know, bottom four in terms of uh, age, but Shea's not young. Like Lou Dort's not young. Like they're young, you know, chronologically, we've been around for a while and they look ready to do something there. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's a team that, you know, if it wanted to get aggressive, it, you know, it might get to the trade deadline and realize it's a good time to do that. Yeah. Cause, well, cause Josh Giddy beyond yeah. the scandal just hasn't been playing very well. Um, specifically his on ball stuff hasn't been very good. And there's teams are really starting to ignore him off the ball as well, giving him the whole Jared Vanderbilt mm-hmm. treatment, you know? And so I think, I think like when I look at the idealized version of the team, it's Dort and Jalen Williams slotted up to the two, three rather than the three, four. And so I almost look at it as, at it as like Shea Dort Jalen a big forward to be named later and then Chet. And to me, like the the team that I'd call, and it's going to be really hard because Danny Ainge is going to be like, I'll take (laughs) all of the picks. But like, but like I I'd be going after Laurie Markinen because if you could get him, if you could get him, if you make a godfather offer there and like, and you're basically like, I get to put Shea with Laurie with Chet with Jalen Williams and, and Lou Dort. Now we're talking about a top tier contender. Does, in my does opinion. Kelly so do it I'm for with you. you. I does think Kelly Olinick do it for you. Oh, I kind of I kind of like that. Man, and he's, he's experienced and he's more too. at this point than Lowry it, probably is. And he and, yeah, exactly. Like you could probably get him for wow, that's mm-hmm. actually 
That's super interesting. I think he's the guy that Danny, I like. The, I, I think he'd be first to go in Utah once they start kind of picking this thing apart. I mean, there'll be an appetite for him because he's you know a six ten, six eleven forward center that can shoot the ball and has that experience. But again, Oklahoma City can outbid pretty much everyone for anything. Uh, that that'd be a guy I'd keep an eye on. Yeah, well, and specifically slotting him next to a rim protector like Walker Kessler, like uh, Chet Holmgren. I mean, th- that's another guy I'd even be looking at for Indy to put next to Miles Turner. That's super interesting. I'm going to keep uh, Kelly Olenek. That's 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 interesting. 